Melbourne's Commonwealth Games are now just 12 months away and the major sports involved are all being put through their paces in and around the Victorian capital. Today, it's the turn of Lawn Bowls and the Australian Open. Welcome everyone, glad you could join us for the women's semi-finals of the inaugural Australian Open. We're at the Yarraville Footscray Bowling Club where 50 elite international and Australian players have gathered. We're down to the last four, all of whom would love to be in the running for a medal 12 months from now. Making it through to the first half of the semis, Roma Dunn from Western Australia, the number one seed, and Marianne Canute from Victoria. Ian Shubank has been here since the tournament started last weekend. And Shuey, what do you think about this first semi-final? Well, Marianne Canute, she had a fantastic win against Karen Murphy, Australia's number one in the quarter-final, Stephen. Playing on her home turf, I think she will start favourite. The conditions will sort them out today, Shuey? Yes, there's a bit of rain around, unfortunately. Roma Dunn from Western Australia, used to very fast greens, slowish green here today, may test the Western Australian bowler. Joining Ian in commentary for the start of this match, Drew Morford. So with a greasy surface and light rain falling this morning, just prior to the semi-final, Marianne Canute, the Victorian, gets us underway. From Caulfield Park. And she knocked out the Commonwealth Games silver medalist this morning in the quarter-final. Roma Dunn, the West Australian, Dudley Park in Mandurah. Noi Tucker, one of the Australian squad members. Very good win from Roma Dunn in the quarter final. Well, one quite long and one bit, bit short, first bowl. Marianne wearing the plastic in case there's a little bit more rain. Quite a strongish breeze. Draws right on it. Tina Funk, our marker today, from Minyup, uh, one of the prospective Commonwealth Games markers. Normally wouldn't be too much trouble for Roma to cut down there's just over one metre of room for second shot, and indeed she has drawn second shot. Good bowl from Roma Dunn. Roma, 62 years of age, her opponent 53. A lot of the players uh, in their 20s, but a couple of really experienced bowlers getting through to the semi. Mary Ann on the mat now was in the Australian squad about 10 years ago, very keen to get back. Skips for Victoria, playing now on the forehand, trying to rest Dunn's bowl out or draw a second shot, and she's done it. So, Roma Dunn, two down, first end. Thumb on the top of the bowl. Careful not to let that bowl slip. Final bowl of the first end. Can Roma get in and reduce this? She's down by two. She slips through. And Marianne Canute takes the first end with two shots. At the start of the fifth end, and a 6 0 lead to Marianne Canute. Very impressive start. This goes to show a lot of players feel they should give the mat away and have last bowl, but Marianne Canute controlling the length. And she's playing very, quite long ends around the 30 metre mark. Uh, so it's a very good tactic employed by Marianne Canute to control the length of end. International rules now, the player winning the previous end can either take the mat and choose the length or give the mat away and have last bowl. Roma Dunn starting to find the range. Generally, a lot of the players prefer to have last bowl, but Marianne Canute controlling her favourite length and playing well. A 
sit on that. Ooh, just missed it. So Roma done for one of the few times in the match, in the driver's seat at the moment. Yes, Drew desperately like to draw a second shot here multiple count to Roma Dunn and two or three on this end and she's right back in this opening set number two actually it looks like her closest bowl perhaps number one <laughs> so holding two first bit of pressure for Mary Ann Canute gaps either side of the jack so she'll be trying to dead draw still two down oh, maximum count of four on offer here for Roma Dunn no reason for Roma to switch to the backhand well, that's right even though Marianne has dominated and won the first four ends it's only a lead of six yes I might only have a lead of two after this end <laughs> Be careful not to drop short. Keep the pressure on. Reach up into the back bowls. That's okay. Maybe three. Well, all of a sudden, sweaty palms, deep breath. See how this bowl comes out of the hand. Well, okay. better line how's the weight that's what happens when tension creeps into the mind and the fingertips Tina Funk indicating that Roma's lying two chance for three any touch on the Jack Drew would be four shots mm. so she can afford to arrive or rest the wing bowl out on the left, turns that bowl over. It could be a maximum oh. count. What an end for Roma Dunn, the Australian number one, who had lost the first four ends, but on end number five, is it three or four? Magnificent. Deliberately played the conversion shot, turned out her opponent's nearest bowl for a maximum count of four. What a turnaround for the West Australian. Roma Dunn have much of a backswing and a fairly longish step and really does deliver the bowl well out in front but stays keeps the body and head still at the point of delivery now Roma done with a chance to uh, dictate the length of the end and she's rolled a shorter one yes yeah, a couple of meters shorter 20 five meters tactically I thought Roma may have given the mat away and elected to play last she needs two shots for a tie and in the event of a tie set whoever wins the second set will win the match unless that is tied and then we we'll go to the tiebreaker And the effective rate, Marianne Canute, 67% effective, and Roma done well, two out of four every end being effective, and that is being reflected on this scoreboard. That opening bowl consistently close to the jack. Now, Roma done. Three bowls left. Needs two. Would love three. Must arrive. Got there. Pressure mounts for Marianne Canute. Marianne Canute would be absolutely devastated if she ties this opening set. Led 6 0 after four ends, 8 4 after seven, with just two to play. She just dropped two. Her opponent is right on top of the jack, now dropping short. Roma Dunn, no danger at all in arriving. Opportunity here for Roma Dunn to pinch the first set. Three shots 
still possible. And the shot bowl just <laughs> fell over closer <laughs> to the jack. <laughs> and now she's got one in with it. Well, and turned the nearest bowl out. So Marianne Canute's nearest bowl is now a metre away. What does she do? Drive at the two bowls, perhaps? Big shot coming up. Still has two to play. Will I drive? Will I draw? It's the draw shot. And it looks narrow. Pressure kicks in. Oh. Who would have thought that <laughs> Roma done an opportunity here for a set lie if this bowl could finish within one metre of the jack? She'd be happy with a tie. Now she's holding a win. That's three. And wisely, Marianne could... Oh, Roma done. Oh. <laughs> Why not? Cross fingers, arms, legs. <laughs> Marianne has won six ends to two, but it is just eight shots to six. And all of a sudden, this first set, which she was dominating early when she was leading 6-0, could go west to Roma Dunn. She's on the mat, but I think she must drive here, Drew. Try try to rip out one or two bowls too tough to draw oh she's attempting the draw shot set down high wide and not so handsome and that is an absolute escape for Roma Dunn incredible Roma Dunn <laughs> comes up to win 9-8 after being nowhere early Well, they need those hats now, not to keep the rain off, but the sun. And that's Marianne Canuck who needs a result in this second set. Five all, if they were tied again after nine ends, that wouldn't be good enough for Canute to force it to the tie break because the first set went to Roma Dunn. She only needs to halve the second set to take the semi-final. But a spot on start from Canute. West Australians on the mat. Roma Dunn, Steve, has not lost an end in this set in this direction. So it's going to be tough for Roma to score now. Mary Ann has nailed the jack. That's a good point, Shu, when you look at what's left in this set, is that there's two ends going to be going this, this current direction that, that favour Roma. Yeah, this is the tail breeze, and again, that would obviously allow the players to put not quite the amount of effort as you deliver the bowl with a tail breeze and that would be more conducive to the conditions that Roma experiences often in the west whereas Mary Ann into the teeth of the breeze you know, put more weight onto the delivery and on the generally slower greens in Victoria and quite often playing in wet conditions most Victorian players play the long ends pretty well so tail breeze what did we start off at about 13 and a half seconds, Shoe? 14 seconds? Yes, the greenkeeper here, uh, Kieran Smith, was saying it was about 14 seconds just before the rain, so that's obviously slowed it down a second or so, and now it's picked up, I'd say, to at least 14 seconds, and uh, that's the time it takes for a bowl delivered to come to rest 27 metres away. You'd almost favour Mary Ann in the tiebreaker because she's been playing brilliantly throughout the tournament. Although Roma Dunn in her quarter final had a very impressive win against Noy Tucker down, from Brisbane. Three measure for four. Oh, terrible news. Oh, down three and a measure for four. Ouch. That's the bad news confronting Roma Dunn. Last bowl, seventh end, five all, but she's three down. Needs to reduce the count. Got to get there. Sure is. And you might too when you get there. That won't feel good at all. 
Oh dear. Both players will be required to measure yes. this fourth shot. Okay. Right, yep. Not even close. Four. It is four. What a tremendous pickup for Marianne Canute. That should just about wrap up the second set, although she might have nightmares about the first when she was four to the good with two to play and lost it. An interesting few minutes coming up now for Marianne Canute because she's four in front with two ends to play. She was eight four up in the first set with two ends to play and was beaten in that first set. Nine eight. But she doesn't look like making that kind of mistake on the evidence of that first bowl here in the eighth end. Surely you can't make that uh, mistake twice, Chewy. Well, the worrying sign, I wouldn't think so, Steve, is the fact that Roma's just dropped four shots on the previous end, so her confidence would not be too high at the moment. Marianne Canute, on the other hand, is a real confidence player. Tough to beat, but she gets in front. So if she could force this match to a tiebreaker, pressure would be right on Roma Dunn. But as we've seen so often, you can play three terrible bowls in a tiebreaker and just one good one. Shots do not count. First player to win two ends will win the tiebreaker. Victorian player Marianne Canute on song. Brilliant bowling. One right behind, one just in front. And it falls onto the centre line. Victorians, I think, came well prepared for a bit of everything today, sitting in the grandstands. Roma Dunn, I think she's won a couple of state singles titles in the West and Bowler of the Year a few times, so she knows how to find the finishing line. And she almost got the shot. So, has she got shot? Just grazed the short bowl. Sits on the shot bowl, and it's a very close thing. Switching to the backhand, Marianne. This type of shot does favour, just overweight with a narrow line, not to be too wide, not to come underneath the jack. And the breeze still coming in from the southeast. Well, Roma Dunn, Steve, she's shaping up on the backhand. She must have the shot, surely, to be playing this hand. Wondering what Roma's trying to do on this backhand side. This is the wider side, so it will swing in now, but wow. reach. Oh, it's well short. Marianne might be happy to go one down and go into the last end three in front. Tactically, that would be a good move. She's also playing the backhand, so we're not sure who's holding. Roma Dunn has last bowl of this eighth end. She's only got one bowl on the head, Stevie. The problem is, well, Roma might as well drop a four as drop a one. Must get the shot on this end to have any chance at all. Otherwise, they will not even play the last end. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> it's too wide to have an effect, is it? Oh, not by much. Not by much. <laughs> and a gust of wind sweeps across the oval footscray. And if it's another okay. shot to yep. Canute. That's the uh, last end, second set. Yeah, yeah she's up by five, so they don't need yeah. to play the last yeah. end. And I guess can go straight to the tie break. Marianne Canute and Victoria to get us underway in the tie break. First semi final on the women's side of this Australian Open. Ramadan, the first set, 9 8.
Newt the second, 10 5. Not needing to play the ninth end. Being more than four shots in front. And uh, Shuey, you think that uh, Canute might just uh, have what it takes here in the tie break? Well, she's won 11 and Steve in the match. Raymond Dunn's only won six ends in the entire match, but anything can happen in a tiebreaker. And now, actually, I might... I know originally I said <laughs> Mary Ann, but can I switch? <laughs> yeah. I think the experience of the international performer, Roma Dunn from Western Australia, may just come to the fore here. Look at this first bowl from Mary Ann. She's two and a half metres short. Second bowl will be crucial. Tail breeze this direction. Meter over. Now, this is where the experience will count. I would almost expect. So you're not a, a fence sitter, you're a fence jumper. Yeah, I have jumped the fence well and truly now, Steve. I thought Marianne was playing full of confidence, but now it just takes one good bowl. I think Roma Dunn has the experience to get one out of her four bowls really close to the jack. That's not the end winner, one would think. She's knocked her opponent's bowl out of uh, temporary contention. Sometimes you see in a tiebreaker, bowls are a long way away from the jack because that is the mental pressure the players are under. They don't want to drop short, and then sometimes you oh, this is narrow. This looks short. See, this is the pressure. Look at this. She's been playing brilliant bowls three metres short. Just to remind you, in these uh, tiebreak formats, uh, the number of shots a player might uh, score and uh, end of the tiebreak doesn't matter. They don't accumulate across the three-end tiebreak. It's just whether you win the end or not. So one's as good as four. Well, this is looking good for Roma Dunn. Running away. Well, there's not one bowl within one metre of the jack, but Roma Dunn's holding. And Marianne Canute has just one bowl to retrieve the shot. Looking better. Does she have enough weight? Can't get there. Shorter still. Unbelievable. And no need for Roma to play the last bowl. She doesn't. She'll take the first end of the tie break. Second end of the tie break. Roma done. Has kept the mat. She keep the pressure on Mary Ann Canute. She's the more experienced player. She's the number one seed coming into the Australian Open on the women's side of the draw. And first lot of uh, bowls in the first end of the tiebreak. Pretty loose. And again now. 28 metre length. Mary Ann Canute, she stripped off for this <laughs> maybe last end of the match. Oh, virtually did choke on the previous end. Needs a good opening bowl just to restore her confidence. It's a bit better. It's a lot better. Why didn't I take that jacket off earlier, she'd be thinking to herself. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Roma Dunn took her uh, weatherproof jacket off uh, about half an hour ago, I suppose. This is psychologically, Steve, where it favours, still favours Roma. She knows that the worst case scenario, she's got one end to play after this. But she could wrap the match up with just one brilliant draw shot. And when that sort of, that's not really intense pressure. You're saying to yourself, well, I've got a chance. If I fail, I've still go to the next end. I don't think Mary Ann's bowl is close enough. It's almost a couple of feet or 60 centimetres short. Now she's overcorrecting, and this is the bowl coming up now for Roma Dunn. Oh, she's thinking of switching to the backhand. Well, maybe. See how Roma tilts the bowl inside the running and switching to the backhand. 
for a match lie. She's running for the jack or the shot bowl. Looking good. Jack into the ditch and follows. Wow, brilliant. Bowl oh, rumour. <laughs> done. A match winning bowl. She's got a toucher in the ditch well away from the jack, but has promoted one of her own bowls close to the ditch. So runs the jack cleanly into the ditch and then using Canute's bowl, she's pushed one of her own to within a foot of the ditch and she ought to be happy with that. International experience coming to the fore. Roma Dunn, the title holder, number one seed holding a match lie. And Marianne Canute has this bowl and another to play. Well, hard to see that. Jack's Being just a beaten. in the ditch there. You can see that Jack. There's a marker on the bank that benefit the players. They know where the Jack is, but this particular bowl is the match winning, potentially match winning bowl, 60 centimetres short of the ditch. I think Roma will be absolutely pumped at the moment. She knows the match is almost in her grasp. Oh, Drawing to the ditch would. Oh, oh, no, that one comes out. I'm not sure, Steve, whether Marianne can actually see the shot bowl to drive at it. Short bowls everywhere. Yes. Can she come around her own short bowl up on near the centre line there with enough weight to take out the shot bowl? To stay in the match, Marianne Canute. Looks wide and doesn't get it. That is the match to the number one seed, Roma Dunn of Western Australia. And through to the final she goes, defeating Marianne Canute of Victoria in the tie break. And a very interesting semi final. Well, Roma, how were you looking after the first four ends? Well, what did you think? Oh, I felt, you know, a little bit jittery. I thought, oh, I can't get the weight here. But don't panic, settle down, get on with it. And I did and got out of jail. And your scoring ends in the first set were big scores. That's right. I needed them to catch up. What was the crucial bowl? I thought in the tiebreaker, when you played with weight and you skipped down the rink, that looked as though that was the one for you. The last end? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I thought, go for broke. You only need a shot here, you know. It was sort of on. I angled it up and I thought, I think I can do this. So I backed myself and went for the jack, yep. So in the final now, a uh, chance of winning, what, Commonwealth Games, represent Australia next year, that'd be nice. Oh, look, that's in the hands of the selectors, isn't it? You know, I don't like to comment on that, but I've enjoyed my career in lawn bowls and whatever happens after this, wonderful. Well, Roma Dunn, not really thinking about the Commonwealth Games 12 months away, but certainly delighted to be into the final on Saturday. And who will her opponent be? Well, it's going to be either Siti Zalina Ahmed of Malaysia or Sharon Sims of New Zealand. Well, Lena Ahmed of Malaysia is the current singles Commonwealth Games champion, and she's up against a Kiwi Shui who's also won at the very top level. Yes, Commonwealth Games gold in the pairs, Sharon Sims, also world champion at pairs. Better now as a singles player, Sharon Sims. They're looking at her to play singles for New Zealand. She had a very impressive win against Australian singles rep Maria Rigby in her quarter final, so it should be a great game coming up now. Drew Morfitt will join Shui for the start of this match. And our marker, Barbara Crossley. And the youngest player to make it through to the semi-finals, 25-year-old Lena Ahmed of Malaysia, to get us underway. She defeated Je Jenny Harrigan on the way through in a bit of a narrow squeak in the quarter-finals. Commonwealth Games gold medalist from Manchester and looking to make a magnificent start in the semi-final. Sharon Sims looks more like an Aussie, doesn't she, in the gold? <laughs> Should be wearing the all black. From Palmerston North. She defeated the Australian Maria Rigby in another tight squeak. And even the tie break went to 2-1. Well, they've both got the radar right at the start. <laughs> 